Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a blessed Sunday. Please leave a comment, like, and a share. And in the news this morning for October 29, 2023, Beijing National arrested after four pounds of ganja found in luggage. Detectives from the Narcotics Division on Thursday arrested a Barbadian national for reasonable suspicion of breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act following the seizure of over 2 kilograms of cocaine at the Sangster International Airport in St. James. Reports are that about 10 p.m., the man was about to board a flight to London when his luggage was searched. During the search, the package of cocaine, which attracts a street value of over 16 million Jamaican dollars, was found concealed in his luggage. He was subsequently arrested and charged. His identity is being withheld as investigators continue their probe. Police arrest the five more suspects in Operation Transportation Streamline. Five more persons were arrested in downtown Kingston on Friday as operatives from the Public Safety and the Traffic Enforcement Branch and the Criminal Investigation Branch continued their crackdown on extortion against the public passenger vehicle operators. Known as Operation Transportation Streamline, the crackdown has resulted in 21 arrests for extortion and the breaches of the Road Traffic Act. Operation Transportation Streamline, which was launched on September 4, is a joint initiative involving the police, the Transport Authority, and the Island Traffic Authority. The operation is aimed at addressing a number of issues in the PPV industry, including extortion, overcharging, vehicular defects, and undisciplined driving. According to a release from the police, over 60 persons have been arrested and charged for overcharging passengers since the start of the operation. Meanwhile, over 50 registration plates have been removed for vehicular defects and the persons charged, and more than 1,000 traffic tickets have been issued to PPV operators for various breaches of the Road Traffic Act. The police are urging members of the public to report incidents of extortion of any sort. Reports can be made at a crime stop at a 311, police emergency at a 119, or the PSTEB tip line at 876-591-5671. Two men wanted for sexual offenses in Portland. The Portland police are seeking the assistance of the public in locating two men who are wanted for sexual offenses committed in the division recently. One of them has been identified as Javier Johnson, otherwise called the Jabez, of a Port Antonio address. He is wanted for rape. Commanding officer for the Portland Police Division, Lloyd Darby, says that Johnson frequents several communities in the parish including Prospect Land Settlement, Hector's River, and Long Road. The other man is Shane Thompson of a St. John's Road address in St. Catherine. He is wanted for allegedly having sexual intercourse with a person under 16 years old. Security guard found not guilty of assault. A 28-year-old St. James security guard was found not guilty of assault after being accused of assaulting a woman at a medical facility four years ago while she was there to pick up an X-ray result. Presiding Judge Sasha Marie Smith Ashley delivered the verdict when the case was called up in the St. James Parish Court on Friday. The accused Alwyn Reed was employed at Cornwall Regional Hospital as a security guard at the time of the incident. According to court documents, on April 12, 2019, the complainant, Renee Brown, who was also charged and acquitted, went to the Cornwall Regional Hospital to collect an X-ray for her mother, but the staff couldn't locate it. While waiting, she expressed her dissatisfaction with the service and continued to argue until the document was found. Reader then told her, You got what you wanted now, so leave. In response, the complainant asked, if I don't leave, what are you going to do? Reed then allegedly punched the woman in the face, grabbed her shoulder, and dragged her outside of the facility. A team of Jamaica Constabulary Force officers and the Jamaica Defense Force soldiers intervened and took them to the Mount Salem Police Station, where both were charged with assault, occasioning bodily harm. During Friday's proceedings, Reed chose to give his statement from the prisoner's dock. According to the defendant, he was at work 
when he received a phone call from the receptionist on the first floor, asking him to look for a file for a patient. He stated that he went to the x-ray department to look for the file, but was unable to locate it. As a result, he said he returned to the reception area and informed the receptionist that he couldn't find the document. He said that he noticed the Brown at the front desk who overheard him telling the receptionist that he couldn't find the file. Brown, he said, then turned to him and suggested that he search in a specific doctor's office. He and the receptionist then went to the doctor's office and searched but were unable to locate the file. Reed went on to say that when he returned to the reception area, Brown became agitated and cursed the receptionist. He claimed that the receptionist then called the doctor, who told her where to look for the document, and that she went back to the doctor's office alone and found it. According to him, the receptionist then passed the document to Brown, who grabbed it and began cursing her. I was standing at the reception area and I realized things were getting more heated, so I went and tried and calm her down and gently rest my hand on her shoulder and tried to escort her through the door, Reed recounted. While attempting to escort her through the door, he indicated to her that now that she had obtained the item she desired, she should not argue with the staff and should leave. But Brown, he claimed, responded by asking, If I don't leave, what are you going to do? Brown then fisted and boxed him in his face, he said, forcing him to defend himself. He claimed that at that point, a JDF soldier passing by saw what was going on and exited the vehicle to intervene. He stated that the soldier then put him in the van and drove him to the Mount Salem police station, where an officer told him to seek medical attention, which he did. He stated that he proceeded to give a statement before being contacted and given a court date. In his response, the prosecutor pointed out that Brown was struck by Reed, but those errors were stolen and that she had bloodshot eyes and busted lips and that she was struck first according to the Crown's case. During cross-examination, several suggestions were put to her by counsel. It was suggested to her that the injuries she sustained that day was as a result of Mr. Reed defending himself, to which she disagreed. It was also put to her that she slapped him in the face and punched him in the chest, and her response to the suggestion to counsel was that he was wrong, the prosecutor said. The prosecutor pointed out that Brown has been consistent with her evidence, responded to each suggestion put to her by counsel, and that the matter was one of credibility. In response, Reed's lawyer, Albert Morgan, stated that the complainant admitted that she was upset. What seems to have happened is that she misunderstood my client's intent. When he touched her and said, go on now, she probably viewed that as an assault and attacked him. The Crown has not negatized the claim of self-defense as raised by my client, the attorney said. Smith actually stated in her ruling that she found Brown's account illogical and that she was initially unhelpful in her own evidence. There was obviously some administrative issues at the facility, and even in her evidence, she indicated that she had also tried to assist with obtaining this report for her mother, that she had gone there for on that day, and so, from that, we have the accused out of nowhere, hitting her, and this is somewhere in her expressing displeasure about how the matter was handled, the judge said. In light of those circumstances, the judge stated that she did not believe Brown's account was credible and found the Reed not guilty. Two months no autopsy murdered a Westmoreland woman's family in pain. Monday, October 30, will make two months since businesswoman Latifa Helps was brutally murdered in Westmoreland, and her family is feeling hopeless as they impatiently wait for an autopsy to be carried out, said Yannick Helps, sister of the deceased. I know the situation in Jamaica where the states want government pathologists, but she has been there almost two months now, and every time we go to the parlor, they keep telling us that we have to wait for an autopsy from Kingston, she bemoaned. According to Yannick, the family was told that a list with the names of those stated for autopsies is sent from Kingston Weekly. However, Lativa's name has yet to turn up, she told the news. Each time it is just one or two names coming down, and when the list does come, her name is not on it. We just can't get anything concrete from anybody at all as to why Yannick complained. The 39-year-old businesswoman, also known as Lati, was gone down on September 4 in front of her establishment, Lati's sports bar and restaurant, 
along Bay Road in Little London, Westmoreland. She also ran a Supreme Ventures gaming outlet. An initial report from the Westmoreland police has said that the killing was a case of mistaken identity. Reports indicate that Latifa arrived at her establishment shortly after 8 a.m. when she was confronted by gunmen on a motorcycle. The men allegedly asked her to identify herself. She ran off but was chased and shot. Her alleged killers were subsequently attacked by machete wielding residents in a bizarre turn of events. It was reported that while trying to escape, the men were struck by a bus whose driver had witnessed the incident. The gunmen reportedly ran into nearby bushes and were chased by scores of angry residents, who police said chopped one of them multiple times. He later succumbed to his injuries. Another man was arrested by the police. While struggling to deal with the loss of their loved one, Yannick helps told the news that her family is also growing weary as information surrounding the timeline of Lativa's autopsy was limited. The family has reportedly attempted to pull all the stops to expedite the process However, those attempts have yielded no success. We're just feeling helpless and hopeless regarding getting anything together for her. Everywhere we turn to see how we can do this has been a roadblock. We have offered to pay for autopsy to be done because I know you can do it privately. But they said we can't because it is a government case, she said. Yanni continued, however, nobody is talking to us about it. We are just sitting down hopeless and helpless. We have gone to the parlor a lot. We have tried calling back the officers in charge. A cousin has tried to reach out to the MP and other leaders in the area, but everybody said that they will get back to us, and we have heard nothing since, Yannick continued. With nowhere else to turn, Yannick stated that members of her distraught family were anxiously sitting on the edges of their seats, waiting on a call to say they can finally put Latifa to rest. One of my uncles was here and he had to leave. Everybody is waiting. Some people were here already and had to go back, Yannick said. We are really hoping to hear that we are going to get the autopsy done soon. Or if it is a case where we can pay to do it privately, then we will do that. I got to understand that it is not an everyday thing that autopsies are done by the government. So we could just pay for it. We are willing to do that so we can get our sister and loved one to bury, she stated. In the meantime, the businesswoman's murder has been particularly hard on their father, Yannick told the news. It has not been good at all, especially for my father. I am having a rough time too because he's now staying with me, so most mornings around 3, I cannot sleep. He keeps talking about how they kill his daughter, and he can't get to bury her, she said. Efforts to contact Minister of National Security, Dr. Harris Chang, to get a comment on the matter were unsuccessful, but the Westmoreland police said late Saturday that the survivor of the mob attack, Edward Murray, otherwise called Edmond, a 20-year-old unemployed man from Whitehall Negril in the parish, had been charged with murder using a firearm to commit a felony, possession of a prohibited weapon, and unauthorized possession of ammunition. His court date is set for November 8. By that time, the family is hoping that something tangible will be done to pave the way for the deceased businesswoman's autopsy to be conducted so that the final preparations for her farewell may be done.